what's on your mind right now? If you're thinking about your fears, worries, problems, regrets, or who to blame for your current challenges, you might want to rethink your thinking. This is the 5 a.m. Miracle, episode number 423, How Successful People Think, The Mental Shift You Can Implement Today. Good morning, I am Jeff Sanders, and this is the podcast dedicated to dominating your day before breakfast. So before we get to the content this week, I'm just going to jump into a bit of a tangent, which is that I am recording this episode on less sleep than I have had in a long time. If you've heard the podcast recently, if you followed me on social media, you have seen and heard about one particular thing, which is that my wife and I have a brand new baby in the house. Uh, As of today, she is a little over three weeks old, and this is a season of life, one that we have done before with our first child and one that we're doing again now, where sleep, oh, it's such a luxury if you can get it, (laughs) it just doesn't seem to happen often enough. And I'm also tackling a bit of a science infection, and so I'm going to record this podcast anyway. And I know that's it's difficult for me to think that like I'm just going to plow through and do something that I really, honestly, just don't want to do right now. But I think that that actually ties in perfectly with what this episode is all about, one that I pre-planned weeks ago uh, to discuss today. And so I want to make sure that this message gets out there because it's such an important one. And especially if you're dealing with things that I am right now, uh, low sleep or illness or fatigue or just struggling through a difficult season. Uh, And not that having a new baby in the house is necessarily super challenging. But it does provide its own set of difficulties to overcome. Uh, She's been wonderful. Rosie, our new daughter, is fantastic. And we've got uh, so many pillows and blankets and sleeping uh, quarters set up in our house in all kinds of different ways. Just so if anybody can get a nap at any point, they just lay down wherever they are and just sleep. (laughs) It's, It's been helpful. But honestly, we're just we're not quite up to speed yet. So. What I want to discuss today is this concept of thinking and especially what it means to be a successful person or from that perspective, someone who is getting things done that they intended to get done, someone who is progressing on amazing goals that they chose and they are going to be intentional with their time. Like successful doesn't necessarily mean uh, super wealthy or famous or anything along those lines. I'm specifically talking about people who are living life on purpose and they are thinking about the things they care about. And so this is going to tie in very closely to a, a new year that just kicked off recently because right now we're in a season of life where people are choosing new goals. We are starting in a whole new path, uh, shifting gears in a lot of ways. And one of the most important elements, if not the most important elements, that will separate your old self from your new self, the last year from the new year, is not necessarily your habits or your systems or your goals or the the fact that you woke up yesterday at 5 o'clock in the morning. Like All those things are nice, but at the end of the day, the one thing that changes who you are and who you will become is what you think about. And so we're going to dig into that today. And honestly, if we go back to the episode I recorded a few weeks ago, the one that you become what you think about, this was a very popular episode because it really struck a chord with people. They really just connected with this idea that thinking can change your life. And so, yes, it is true that your thoughts define you. Now, at the top of the show, I open with the idea that if you're thinking about your fears or your worries, your problems, your regrets, your current challenges or blaming other people, that those ways of thinking, those things that take up space in your brain can actually get in the way, shocker, of the things that you want. And so we're going to discuss both sides of this coin, the things we think about that hold us back from our goals and the things we think about that propel us forward. Now, recently in my life, I've had a lot of these negative thoughts, everything with financial fears to worst case scenarios to how my goals could fail, like you name it, like my brain has gone through a whole cycle of just crazy negative thoughts and I'm aware of that. 
And so because I'm aware of that, I'm also aware that I can change those thoughts and I can shift how I exist every day, regardless of my schedule or sleep or lack thereof, regardless of my circumstances, I can choose new thoughts. And those outcomes we then get from those new thoughts can produce the outcomes we're looking for in our lives, which are those goals we want to achieve. So let's get to this concept of how successful people think and this mental shift that you can implement today. And not just today, but literally right now in this moment. Now let's begin with this concept of how not to think. We'll begin with that side of the coin, the things that are not going to work for us. Number one are regrets and mistakes from the past. Let's just throw this out there that you cannot change the past, no matter how hard you try. And any thoughts whatsoever that are associated with regrets or thinking about mistakes you made previously, if you're just thinking about it from that perspective, that you feel bad about something you chose to do or a thing that happened to you, but that's it, you stop there and it's just this recurring cycle, this repetitive tape that keeps playing over and over of a mistake you made, a regret that you have and you feel bad about it, that doesn't leave you anywhere. It just leaves you in a cycle of feeling that same emotion over and over again. But regrets can help if you choose to learn from them. And those past mistakes can actually benefit you if you choose to benefit from them. And so the key to this one, to regrets and mistakes in the past, this recurring tape of just plays over and over, stop the tape. Stop playing that over and over in your mind and instead Think about how you can grow, learn, improve, and move on. This is a process. This is not an overnight thing. It's not an immediate thing that will produce results, but it is immediate in the sense that you can change that mental tape right here and now and begin that process to shift how you think. Now, the second thing that we tend to think a lot about that does not benefit us is blame we tend to think about the person we can point to and say, this person, this organization, this company, this scenario is to blame for my current challenges, current problems, current issues, and it's not my fault. And therefore, I get to yell at somebody. I get to make them the the scapegoat for this issue. But at the end of the day, successful people are not looking to point fingers. Blaming other people only makes you a victim And then it stops there. And if you remain in that victim mentality for too long, it will only degrade your performance. It will degrade your ability to become the kind of person who can rise from that challenge. You know, successful people, yes, they think about their problems, but only so much as to own the problem and then take responsibility for the solution. So even if someone else is to blame for a problem or many problems in your life right now, Even if that's true, that it's not your fault, you still are in charge of your life and your solutions moving forward. You know, on that same note, I had a person last year that I was very mad at, a person who I could blame for the rest of my life for an issue that they caused that I am still to this day angry about. Yet, if I spend my time blaming this person for the issue they caused, it doesn't help me. The only thing that's going to help me is thinking positively and moving forward and letting go of the issue. Now, yes, if you can forgive the person who wronged you, if you can move past that in a way that is healthy and fulfilling to you, that's the best place to be here because blame is just not going to work long term. It can be a temporary way to let out some emotion, but it has to end there. It cannot go on day after day, week after week, month after month. That blaming cycle is destructive. And so we want to move past that in a healthy and productive way. Now, the third area that tends to pop up when we think about things in a negative way are our fears and worries about the future. Now, at the end of the day, the future is the future. We don't live there. We're not existing or interacting with the future. We are only ever in the now. That is the only thing we can control. The only area of life that exists is here and now. 
So fears and worries about the future are robbing you from the present moment. They are taking away your ability and your power to change. Because if you spend the present moment fearful and worrisome about what may happen, that's only going to be beneficial if it allows you to make a different choice in the here and now to change who you're going to become then. But that means that now has to change. The current moment has to be different or else your present moment going forward will just be filled with more fear and more worry. Now, for me personally, this is probably my most difficult area. I don't tend to have issues with regrets or mistakes in the past quite as often. And to blame somebody else, yes, that does tend to happen on occasion, but I tend to get over that fairly quickly. But this one, number three, the fears and worries for the future. Of all the things that I think about negatively, this is the one for me personally that just hangs on more than anything else. And so I've got a personal challenge to move past that and live more in the moment which comes from a number of different strategies we're going to get to in just a few minutes. But let's just hang for this one for a second. Because fears are one of the biggest obstacles, if not the biggest obstacle, for anyone starting something new, taking on a new project, saying yes to a new challenge, starting a new, a new goal, becoming the better self they plan to become. You know, what we're looking for here in this life of trying to be a high achiever or a productive person or just a a human being who makes a difference in some way, well, that all comes ultimately from the actions that we take. And if we hold ourselves back from those actions because we're fearful, we're worrisome, we see the worst case scenario all the time, then we stay in that bubble all the time. And we ultimately never take the actions that produce the results we actually want. So that's the change we're looking for. The change that says, I acknowledge the fear. I acknowledge the worry. I know what's in my mind. I know what I'm scared of. I know what's holding me back. Now let's make the shift to ask that question, how do we get beyond that? What actions can we take to make sure that those fears are directly addressed so we can move forward? And this starts with the way that you think, the way that you approach each and every moment. It starts now and it can change those fears and worries into positive and productive actions going forward. Now, the fourth and final area that we tend to think negatively about has actually to do with other people, not ourselves. So when we hang around other negative people who tend to have these same types of thoughts in their head, they have regrets, they have blame, they have fears and worries. And guess what? All of their negative emotion will then rub off on you. And it may be subtle at first. It may be a little jab here and there, a little joke. You know, oh, haha, my life is kind of difficult right now. But then it gets a little more intense over time. And it just keeps poking at you over and over. And that person or those people just stick around a little too long. They're a little too negative. And the next thing you know, your life is their life. Their problems are your problems. Or your problems just get worse because you're thinking like they are. So if you're in that scenario now, if you've got a job with coworkers you just don't like or are just a little too negative, or maybe it's your friends, maybe it's your family, maybe it's just people you thought were a positive force that just aren't anymore, whatever the case is, it is on you to change your environment. Now, this may not be very easy. This may be the most difficult thing you've had to do in a long time, but man, it will change your life. If you can change the kinds of people who you're around, whether it's going to a gym with people who are you know, taking care of their bodies, you go to a, a class or if someone is trying to engage their mind, you go somewhere with other people who you want to be like, people who are positive, successful, and moving forward. That will change your life faster than most things. So if you're in that space right now, I feel you, I know what it's like, but now it's time to change. So figure out what you can do and do it now. So now that we've identified these four areas where thinking just drags us down, well, what can we think about instead? Number one, always, and this is the key to the entire episode this week, always think about what you want, your goals, the things you're after, the things you're pursuing, the next actions that will make you one step closer to the things that you want. So think about what big goals you want to achieve long-term 
and the smaller goals you want to pursue in this season right here and now. You know, the clear vision of knowing exactly what you are pursuing, that is the stuff. Those little itty bitty tangibles and the bigger vision, those are the things you want in your life. The big vision you're pursuing and the steps to get there. Those are the thoughts you want in your life all the time because that's what we're going to be pursuing. The goals we're after are the things that should be in our mind. The positive version of the things that we want, that's what we think about. That's what drives us forward. That's what allows us to achieve our next actions and ultimately achieve the bigger goals themselves. So if you're going to shift your thinking in any possible way, think now in this moment, what do you want? What are you excited about? What's going to drive you forward? And let that be the energy and the source of the energy that pulls you out of the slump you might be in to actually achieve the big things you truly are after. Now, number two, as you're pursuing what you want and the goals you're working on, well, think about what you can do literally right now to get those things. So think about how soon you can get started, which literally means today, right now. Can you make progress in this moment towards your goals? Now, along the way, also consider who else can help you achieve your goals because other people have probably already achieved the goals that you want for yourself as well. So reach out to them. Who can help you? Who has that vision already and that success under their belt that you can learn from? Also along the way, think about what resources you already have available to make your dream a reality. Because odds are you're probably holding yourself back, believing that you don't have what you need to begin now. But the reality is you probably do. Because you can begin wherever you are. It may be a small step, it may feel itty bitty along the way, but any tiny step will eventually add up to a larger one and will snowball into actual big results down the road. Now, along these lines, you can also think about the obstacles you have, but I would be a little bit cautious on that. The key to the obstacle is to figure out how to eliminate those quickly. So, for example, if you are working on a project and you feel like you're held back by an outside force or some other factor in your calendar or it's some obstacle that's clear and obvious, well, can you get around it? Can you push through it? Can you find a way to make sure you're making forward progress more often? Which doesn't always mean direct action towards the goal. It could taking some time out to remove obstacles to clear the path, and that's also going to be helpful. So what you can do right now is either make direct progress towards the goal or find obstacles you can remove to clear that path to make it even easier. And number three, the third area to consider for what to think about instead of these problems and issues and regrets we have in our lives is consider the habits and systems you can establish to make getting what you want easier in the future. You know, habits and systems are one of the most impactful things to implement in your life for long-term success. So ask the questions, what actions can you take now to schedule consistent progress on your calendar every week? Or what habits would make the biggest difference in your long-term success? And how can you eliminate distractions to improve your focus on what matters most? You know, one of the key areas in my life recently that I've been focusing on to make my new year more effective has 100% been my calendar, right? I have a new child at home. Everything's just a little bit new and a little bit different. So for me, I know the best place to begin to change my life is my calendar. When can I get the things done I care about? Where will I work on those things? How can I guarantee success? How can I be more clear on the goals that I want and more clear on when, where, and how I'll definitely make progress on those goals. That's it. That's the whole system right there. I know what I want, and here's how I'm going to get it. And then you take that one step further and say, here's how I'm going to get it consistently. And those are the habits. Those are the systems. So you look at your life in the most practical way possible, your to-do list, your calendar, and you figure out here's what happens and when and where and why and how. Answer those questions, and then you have the clarity you need to move forward in the present moment. Now, the final section today I want to discuss involves how to change your thinking. 
So at the top of the show, we discussed this idea that you might be in a rut or a negative pattern. You have these thoughts about fears and worries and problems, and you want to shift to become the kind of person who thinks about the positive and the proactive and the better things that move you forward. So let's get to this actual reality, the practical nuts and bolts of how to change your thinking. Number one is catch yourself in the moment. When you notice your negative thinking, stop, acknowledge it, be aware of it, write it down, say, okay, I just caught myself once again with a fear about the future or I was going to blame somebody else. I, I just caught myself. So we stop. And just like meditation, you will notice that thought and then you let it go. Notice the negative thought and let it move on. And then replace that thought as quickly as possible in that moment with something that's much more positive, proactive, and productive. The key to catching yourself is not just being aware of the negative thought, but it is critical in the moment to change that thought as something more positive. This is where changing your thinking becomes very practical and very helpful long term. But I will make this note that this is not an immediate thing. This process of thinking differently, this takes time. This takes practice. This takes acknowledging the negative thought and replacing it with a positive one over and 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 over every day for a long time. And honestly, this may be a challenge for your entire life, but you will get better. And this will make a huge difference in your attitude, your energy, your enthusiasm, your pursuit of new perspectives and new goals and new achievements, all of those new amazing things can become more possible when you change your thinking in the moment when you catch yourself in that negative spiral of of death and doom and awful stuff, right? Pull yourself out of that with something that's positive, proactive, and productive. Those kinds of thoughts will change your life. Now, you might be thinking, well, Jeff, I don't tend to have those kinds of thoughts. I don't even know how to be more positive when I'm in a difficult place. Well, that's where you turn to someone else. A podcast like this one, a great audiobook, a great friend who will listen to you. You find outside external sources of motivation and energy and positivity. And let me give you a really good example of that. Although this will only align to certain types of people. And I say that with a caveat because I just read the book Can't Hurt Me by David Goggins. I finished it literally last night. And that book is a radical shift in mindset, a radical shift in a way of thinking. Now, not everyone who reads an intense book like the one from David Goggins is going to say, that's awesome, I'm on board, right? He's a very intense human being, possibly the most intense human I've ever experienced and will ever experience. He is so much, but so much of the good. Right? There is so much to be to glean from someone like him and to learn and to be influenced by someone who is just oozing with energy and fight and this feisty attitude to want to get after life. And so if you are in a rut and you're experiencing that I don't know what to do moment way too often, well, then find external sources that will fill you up. Find those other sources of energy and enthusiasm that will fill your mind with things that are positive, proactive, and productive. So then when you have those negative thoughts and you replace them, your life will change in the moment right now. Now, along those same lines, you can actually write down your affirmations, your goals, your positive thoughts, have those with you to remind yourself of how to think the things that tend to work with your mind, right? If David Goggins book is not for you, then find one that is for you. Find the way of thinking that aligns to who you want to be. And then that's going to be your mantra, your daily drumbeat to put that into your mind over and over and over. Repetition is your best friend. This is not a quick fix. This is not a implement this today and by tomorrow you're better off. No, absolutely not. This is a long-term drumbeat, a, a drip of water, like David Goggins says in his book, this drip of water over and over and over. That's what's going to happen. That's what's going to change your life. It's that daily habit, that daily system, that daily affirmation, that repeated action of positive, proactive, productive thoughts. Those will change your life. Now, outside of just external sources of things like a positive audiobook or a mantra, you can also dig a little deeper into your own self with a daily endorphin rush, or what I like to call just going for a really good run. 
right? When you do something physical, could be running, time and sunshine, laughter, upbeat music, or a positive conversation with a close friend, these types of activities will give you that endorphin rush that will allow you to feel really good. Those feel good chemicals you get, those endorphins, well, those can help propel you forward. And you want to have as many of those types of moments every day as you can. So if you tend to be the kind of person who's a little bit more negative, a little bit cynical, a little bit down, then you want to experience this type of endorphin rush as often as possible. You want to bring in that type of chemical hormonal shift that will change the way you feel more often. And this will be a tipping scale that over time will start with more negativity and less positivity. And then you'll begin to move that over time to a lot more positive and a lot less negative. And then you will, for the most part, become the kind of person who is thinking positively, who's experiencing those feel-good chemicals, those natural hormones that are propelling you into the kind of person you want to be. And honestly, physical fitness and physical activities those will get you out of a rut faster than almost anything else. Honestly, going for a good run might be the solution to most people's problems. It is truly nature's best medicine. And the final area today we're going to hit on to change your thinking is to leverage your productive moments. That literally means to remind yourself how good it feels to have a positive and productive moment, a positive and productive day. Because when you identify what those things are when life is going really well, you can reproduce those days as often as possible. And the more that you are aware, like hyper aware and clear on what it means to feel good, to have a good day, to be productive, the more knowledge you have to then reproduce that and experience that more often. And yes, that could be going for a good run. It could be spending some time outside. It could be listening to awesome music on your way to work or a really great podcast or audiobook on your next workout day. Like whatever the key thing is, you leverage those productive moments and you reproduce them as often as you can. And then you will think more successfully. You will think more progressively. You will push yourself towards the goals you care about because your whole life, all of it is just oriented around this positive forward motion. Right? You'll acknowledge obstacles. We'll acknowledge that bad things can and do happen, but we don't stay in that rut. We don't stay in that frame of mind and that, and that way of thinking because it only holds us back. Because in life, we're either moving forward or being pulled back, and that is it. It is one way or the other. There is no on the fence moment. We are one way or the other. We are positive or we are negative. And so our goal is to be on that positive side of the fence as often as we can, because that's what leads to actual progress. Now, yes, you can use anger, you can use aggression, you can use negative energy in a positive way, but that's a positive decision to leverage those negative emotions into a positive, productive session. That's awesome. Start there, right? David Goggins, once again, that author of that book, Can't Hurt Me, He leveraged a ton of negative emotion to fuel, honestly, almost his entire life. That's not everyone's story, but if it's yours, then use it, leverage it, and make it work for you. Otherwise, take the positive, reproduce it, and make your life something meaningful every single day. And for the action step this week, Think about what you want. Instead of trying to stop thinking about your fears, worries, and regrets, begin to think about what you want more often. The more that you think and talk about what you want and the goals you're working on, the less you will think about the parts of life that will prevent you from achieving those same goals. JeffSanders.com slash 423 is the place to go to get the episode notes. Also, subscribe to this podcast in the app you're using right now or go to jeffsanders.com slash subscribe to see a full list of all the apps available. Again, that's jeffsanders.com slash subscribe. That's all I've got for you here on the 5 a.m. Miracle Podcast this week. Until next time, you have the power to change your life and the fun begins bright and early.